There's a lot of buildings with uh, green facades. It's sort of a fad right now. But this one has trees and they are fully grown and they are in a natural setting. I mean, the trees have been chosen to position according to the orientation of the sun. So it's like a vertical forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think the philosophy is reconnecting to the earth, the way it used to be. Man builds uh, structures that are rigid, are geometrical. They tend to be more and more disconnected to the earth. So this is bringing a little bit of uh, the way that we used to live in a modern setting, but you know, still with the characteristic or some of the characteristics of, of the ancient way of living. We are forest creatures, in a way. You see, my, my children, they, I told them, Dad, where, where, where's, where do you live now? I, I live uh, on, on a tree. What? <laughs> <laughs> and they came and they... Are you sure. joking? <laughs> Don't you have a real house? No, no, listen. You, you, you. Right, it's a tree house. A, yeah, 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 love it. You are in this atmosphere which it's typically of the countryside, you know, where you have all of this green, but you are in the city centre. So for us, it's just a place to breathe some fresh air. Is there any rhyme or reason to some of the outside here? There's a lot of openings, it's not a yeah. little wall. Yeah, yeah. the way the, the building is shaped, the flats, and there are 63 of them, they are shaped like boxes and they're stuck on top of each other. So they're all separate, but they are disaligned because you need to make space for the trees to grow. So they're not stuck vertically one exactly on top of the other. They are just skewed on left and right. So from one floor to the next, you have enough space to put trees in, on the facade. So you see these large vases, there are three sizes of them. I think this one with the liquid amber inside is the smallest one, but they get up to four meters of diameter. So you can hold uh, fully grown trees inside. <laughs> and it won't overgrow the pot? No, it's uh, sort of a, like a gigantic bonsai. Mm. It's, they still grow, they probably in the last five years, they have grown a couple of meters, but they stop. Uh -huh. okay. yeah, so. This is, uh, it reminds the onlookers of the earth from which the trees, they grow up. It's made of a mix of concrete and mud, and there's a straw bales behind that to give volume. Yeah? And I like how it, it mimics the, sh the, the sort of a, a big tree. It's, yeah. You know. <laughs> These are Architetto Pia. Luciano Pia took snapshots of real trees in terrain, and then he sketched it out. So they are real, sort of emulating real trees, existing trees. I feel like it's always an entity, but uh, what that surprises me is this feels alive. It is alive. It's like uh, a person. It changes with time because it ages. The, the trees mature and they grow older. It changes with season. It radically changes the aspect of it. So you can really feel the passing of time when you're inside here. And yet you're still in a urban situation. I think there are 16 different kinds of trees. The trees are part of the facade. That means uh, that if for any reason one of the trees would die, you are forced to replace it with the same kind of species. It's like if you want to change a window of an historical building, you need to replace it with exactly the same thing. And the trees serve two purposes. First of all, they emit an incredible amount of oxygen during the daytime. So also, the leaves protect you from smog and this harm-inducing micro dust. And also, during the summertime, the foliage, they protect you from the sun and radiation, which is very strong. I mean, it's a, it can get really hot during the summertime. So here, you just feel like you've entered a forest. Yeah, yeah. There's a big difference. You can feel it in summertime if you go to the top floor and then you climb down. You reach here, there's about three to five degrees difference. You can feel it on your skin. It takes a lot of energy to do that. And this is done naturally just by having trees inside. 
So there's even water yeah. feature. To, how does that function? It helps the cooling. That is fed by rainwater. There's a filtering system, so it acts as a, as a tank if you want to. There are several underground tanks also. So the, we don't have conventional pillars here. Yep. They also resemble trees. <laughs> yeah, they, they are trees. Actually, they are shaped like, well, uh, Architetto Pia took some snapshots of a boulevard here in Turin. There's this massive platen, so a snapshot then in the wintertime, so you can see the trunk and not hidden by the leaves. Some of them are hollow, so they bring down utility, they harvest the rainwater for uh, the irrigation system, or they bring down dark waters from the flats. So you have a gutter integrated into yeah. the... The top floors, they are penthouses with a flat roof. Whenever you're watering the grass up there, it's not really earth what you have underneath, it's a porous material for weight. So the water percolates down to the bottom, reaches the bottom, there's a gutter system that flows down from here. When the tanks are full for the rainwater harvesting, it flows down and it serves the purpose of irrigation if you want to. So that would be rainwater, rainwater? I think this is rainwater. So it's using part of the tree as a pathway coming down and then it gets outside. So as you move through here, you feel like in a forest. Well, when you walk in, you have this feeling that it quietens you in a way. People, they come in noisy and then they step inside here. You can immediately hear the, the volume of their voices lowering down. That used to happen in cathedrals as... Correct. Well, it's all designed to make an effect. The effect that they were striving for is uh, reminding you the presence of God. God is nature, here is nature. So, you know, you can take it in many ways. <laughs> I wish I could tell you what are all these trees. I know some. This one is a natural, it gets super red. There's a couple of uh, liquid amber there. They have uh, the ones that are colored on top. I love the ground floor because you, you can enter without taking any stairs, uh, without the, the elevator. You can get in uh, with a bike, uh, with a scooter. So, so you're basically at the, you're at the root, the trunk of the tree. Yeah, I am. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the, uh, at the roots. And this place, there's a private garden that I love it, and there's a terrace too upstairs. Uh, I have five children. Five. Yeah, wow. I'm separate. So when I when I decided to settle here. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking about taking a big apartment with more rooms. And then I decided for a more uh, funny place. My children, they sleep here. I sleep there and then you have the terrace. And it's like, it's a bit like a Robinson Crusoe tree. No, what's the word? Uh, oh, Swiss Family Robinson. Yeah. I've been in Disneyland and there is a big tree. <laughs> You can walk through and, and it's just like this. Right, it's a tree house. It's a tree right, house. And you put that together. <laughs> yeah. it's like a Love it. Yeah. We are a uh, lot of people, six, me plus yeah. the uh, five, but we have room for, for everyone. Uh, so mm, the other one, they stay here, they at the phone all night long. <laughs> <laughs> It's, the window here is incredible, so you yeah, really feel like you're out. Yeah, top. it's and what's amazing, it's like a theater. So at night, you do this, and at morning, it's like a theater. And I love it because the theater over nature. What's uh, amazing too is that there are an awful lot of uh, animals living here. We had ducks, they do the nest here, uh -huh. and also squirrels. I have to fight against the squirrels because they, they enter, they, they walk on the sofa. Uh, small birds too, and I, I, I love it. Mm, the garden outside, it's intended to be like a real wood. 
I mean, it's interesting because you don't really see barely any windows or buildings. No, it's no, it's, it's amazing. It's not an Italian garden or a, an English garden uh, written uh, in a design way. It's designed to represent real wood. So every plant you see here, it's uh, a local one. And they are planted uh, as they were in grown wild. in the wild. The, the funny thing is that this building there was the first factory of the Fiat Group. A factory. They used to produce the first Fiat cars who were produced here. And all this land was outside the city, at the border of the city. It was, a, you know, pastures. You know, a hundred years ago, they were producing cars here. It was an industrial area. In fact, all the buildings you see around there somehow are connected to the Fiat Group. This one used to be where they used to print La Stampa, which is the local newspaper. Here was a parking lot for for the Fiat. Down there, it was something else owned by, by Fiat, and now they build an insurance company. So it's, it's all the backyard of Fiat, this one. This one is the first attempt to do a dry run on the reinforced concrete that then they used to build a lingotto. So before building a lingotto, they built up this to measure how strong they could make it by using this pillar so widely spaced. So it's innovation in different moments, right? Yep. They started innovating back then with the car that was uh, the forefront of technology. And then they built buildings to service the car industry at the infancy. And now we have a residential unit which is sort of innovative. So there's a, there's a bit of a zen circle if you want to. Here we have the pipes coming from the, the well and the two pumps. And, and here, at the second, it's the second floor underground, we have the old well. It's the oldest part of this building. Okay, we, here we have the old well from Fiat. And this is the same well Fiat used for the first factory they have in Turin. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's the first, but one of the first, yes. Well, it's a part of history also. It's, it's a part of history because this, this was the ancient well. And they were using it for what? For, for production, I think for cooling down some parts of uh, machinery yeah. or something like that. You're still using it? Yeah, yeah. This is the well <gasps> where the water we reused for taking water from the underground to make heating, cooling and domestic hot water production. Here we are in the um, uh, heating and cooling central system. The water coming from the wells, uh, we have two lines. The lines uh, from, the, from the wells going to the heat exchanger system, the first stage of heat exchanging. Here we have two big heat exchangers. We designed this kind of thermal exchange system to conserve as much as possible the temperature from the wells. The water from the well is just 15 and usually during the winter we take 15 and we discharge not less than 8. In Italy we have two limits, 8 degrees during the winter and 22 during the, the summer. So we can discharge water on the second well less than eight during the winter to prevent the, the cooling of the underground and not over 22 during the summer to prevent the overheating of the, of the ground. So these are the two heat pump. This kind of machine, it was uh, one of the best efficiency machine when the plant is built eight years ago. It's a multiple scroll system with a um, tube evaporator and condensator that are more efficient with part load systems. That means that when we have not so much load, thermal load, just one compressor or two compressor or three compressor goes on, but the exchanger is the same, it's big and the heat exchanging, it's quite good. And we have just one pump for the low temperature system, that is this pump, bring energy to all building during the winter. And uh, another pump like that on the other side, bring hot energy for domestic hot water during the winter. 
and cooling water during the summer. But the interesting side of this plant is especially during the summer. During the summer, the heat pump produces in the same time hot water for domestic hot water production and also cooled water. The cooled water goes to the flats for space cooling and the hot water for a domestic hot water production. That means that it's a kind of floating system that takes hot uh, energy from the space cooling and put this hot energy to the domestic hot water production without using water from the underground. That means that with one kilowatt hour of electric energy, we can produce approximately eight kilowatt hour of useful energy. This is a house where people spend approximately half that standard house. It's a good example of how a good envelope go with a good energy production plan. So now you're up getting up into another story. Another yeah, building. you can see the trees from slightly higher up. Every apartment has a balcony? Each one has at least one. Some of them are two or three. And in between there are these triple slabs of, of glass. So you can see through that. You can see through yeah. and they let, they let uh, the light in for the trees. So they are done on purpose. That's great. And you can see also the walls are shingles. They are hand uh, cut. They are not really cut, they are broken the way they used to do it. They are slightly irregular and they breathe in, in the sense that when they get rained on, they swell up and then with the sun they contract, they sort of move all the time. Any changes, you can see the water pattern here. And then if you go in places where the water or the sand doesn't hit, you see still the natural color. These are 10 years old. There's a, a void behind this, so there's, a, there's an airflow at the back of this. These are good, they say, for 30 to 40 years, but I think it's incorrect. I've seen shingles like this in America. Yeah. They last over 100 years. The, the trick is to keep them ventilated. And behind this shingles layer, there's this space and there's, there's a thermal insulation. I think it's 20 centimeters. Then there's a brick wall with a cavity, which is insulated in another brick wall. So the total thickness, including the shingle of the wall, is probably 60 to 70 centimeters. So they're really thick walls. That's why it's, it's so energy efficient. There's uh, the two walls inside, it's thermal mass. Then they have, you have the coating outside, so it's keeping the temperature inside, and the shingle that are ventilators. You find that the light is increasing, of course, as you walk up. This is a fig tree on my terrace, which is up top. My daughter started to eat the figs, and she would throw away part of the figs. And some of them landed there, now we have a fig tree there. It's funny. It really is wild. It's not so pruned and taken care of and... No, we are trying not to make it look like the classical Italian garden mm -hmm. that is all squared and geometrical. It's, it's very natural. Mm -hmm. We have squirrels all over the place, a few ducks, they come and nest here in the springtime. This is like you're up in the overstory, I mean you don't see yeah. the trees anymore. Yeah. The paradox of being inside the forest, right? integrated the trees and all are with the forests behind. Yeah, it's, it's echoing the hills. Uh, the, the idea that the building is picking a little bit of a surrounding environment, so all the trees are coming from the hill, or the water feature on the ground echoes the river pole, which is two blocks down. Oh my gosh, your terrace is amazing! So, what made you decide to come live here? We were actually looking for a place to live and we went around many places here, around in Tolin. We saw this one and we said, okay, this is the place. Mainly because you are in the city, it's very close to the city center, but it feels like you are on holidays every day. Really? <laughs> yes. It, it's, it's just because of the plants, because of the green, uh, because it's like you are in, in your bubble. <laughs> so you see that, you know, you, you feel the plants, I mean, you're quite high, so you don't get as much. It's a, 
more open, but it's enough to get... Yes. They, they have been positioned in places where they are right for the sun, so, and the areas that don't need that much of a sun, so yes. What's behind you? That says pomegranate tree, no? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's pomegranate, yeah. So some of them are edible? Ah, uh, yes, if you can reach them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a second terrace? We have many terraces. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, it's, you can see the inside. And this one, the view is really nice because you, you see all of the inside. This yeah. color just popped. <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a couple of weeks ago. And it lasts around one month, yeah. Here it's really nice, the moon. You can see the moon at night. Do you see all of the inside with this special light? It's beautiful. Do you like being above the trees rather than in the trees, like lower? It's nice because when we f first moved here, it was just me and my husband, and we lived in one of the lofts. Uh, the bottom floor? Yes, the bottom floor, yeah. And we lived there, and then our son came, and then we realized we needed more space. And we had that decision, like, where do we go? We go and look for somewhere else, or should we stay here? We, we really fell in love with this place, so we started to look for a bigger apartment. And then we saw that one, and we <laughs> moved here. <laughs> and, yeah. So, so we have my son's room there. Oh, oh so he has a nice little view too. Oh, yeah. Lucky kid. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so and then we have another terrace over there. You can come in. <coughs> Angie, possiamo venire? Yeah, that is a tree there. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I like this view from here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do you feel differently here than you would on a terrace with a couple plants? I think we're lucky because it's the whole atmosphere that connects really well here. It's just like the architecture with the plants, which I think makes the difference. Yeah. We also have that other no, terrace. We have another one. Yes. Oh, it's the house of balconies. Yes, yes. <laughs> we have so many balconies. If we fight with each other, each one can go in their own balcony. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where I work. <laughs> so it's another part of the of the house, to be honest. It's for guests, you know, they have their own room. But it's also where I work, so I can be a bit independent from the main house. And you have your own <laughs> office terrace. Yes, it's good when you want to just <laughs> stand up from the computer and just... So you see all the, like, this plant doesn't really change and these yes, do. Yes. Well, this one you'll see like in around one or two months, it will lose all of the leaves. You see the trees, they change and, you know, it's part of life, you know? <laughs> so I guess they remind us that time goes by and I think it's also, it's also, you know, part of life. It's kind of nice to see change. Yes, right? yeah. yes. Yeah, it's interesting it how plants affect us, right? When you see a place with a lot of different plants and that feels like a forest, you become calmer and... Yeah, it affects your humor. Yeah, I think the green, uh, I think it's a color that kind of keeps you calm, you know. So with all of this green and especially when there is the good season, you kind of feel you are on holidays because you have that feeling that the plants, the good weather, it, <laughs> you cannot be mad living here. <laughs>